You talked just now about the desire discrepancy between couples, um, and that's where the sex doll or the sex uh, robot will come in. But in a conservative society like India, where even the use of a vibrator is quite shocking, and in fact, in a recent film, it was considered a, uh, an act of infidelity, you know, the fact that a, a married woman used a vibrator. Do you ever see this ever working in a country like India? Well, uh, I think uh, as a matter of infidelity, it mainly uh, is mainly about the couple itself. I think if you are honest uh, with your partner uh, about like using either a sex toy or like a sex robot, I don't think you could should count as infidelity. After all, you're being honest with with your partner, and you can reach this decision together as a couple. That actually might strengthen the relationship they have. Yes, I, I mean, I certainly can't speak to, uh, you know, uh, the, the culture of India specifically, although I will say that while you may be a very conservative society, you're also one of the most technologically sophisticated societies in the world, and you're always on the cutting edge. So I would not be at all surprised to see India on the cutting edge of these technologies as well. Um, but I, I agree that there will be, um, in various places around the world and everywhere, um, moral concerns that people have, and I think that um, many of those will be legitimate. I mean, right now, people already have problems in relationships around the use of pornography and so on, and we haven't resolved those questions within relationships. I think that there's going to be huge potential for problems, and I think there's going to be huge potential for benefits as well. And I just, I, I really think that the technology is not going to just take us in one direction or the other. It's going to be complicated. But I think, in general, I think it's going to be of benefit. I think we should not panic. How is um, bringing a sex robot into our lives? In fact, there is a very popular book at the moment called Machines Like Me, written by Ian McEwan, who's the Booker Prize winner, um, that it's actually written in fictional terms, but we're not so far from it where a robot is brought home. He's not a sex robot, but a robot is brought, brought home, and it impacts the lives of those people. How do you foresee if a couple brings a humanoid into their lives, how can it impact their lives and how can we make it impact it in a positive way and avoid the pitfalls? Uh, I think that the design will have part to do with it. Communication will have part to do with it. There is going to be a big generational difference too. I think that younger people right now, I think we forget, I forget constantly how connected young people are to their technology and how integrated it is into their lives. So for a young couple, uh, for you know, the post-millennials, when they become older, integrating tech this form of technology into their lives will just be another thing. I mean, they're already talking to their fridge. They're already arguing with their television, right? I mean, th their technology is so much part of their family. Yeah, but this is the bit that scares me. I mean, just to go off on a note, I came home one day and my seven-year-old was talking to Alexa as if she was a real person and having a conversation and saying, how's your day? And I'm not sure that this, maybe I'm a dinosaur, but this doesn't seem completely natural to me. And you were talking about how you feel less lonely when you have Harmony next to you in the office. Yeah. Do you want to share that? Yeah, so like uh, it's quite funny when you are working in the office and like uh, even when she's turned off, like we closing the office and say like bye to Harmony. It's, it's just like a, it's her presence. It brings like a, it connects us in some way. So. We want, we, want, we want to do good by, uh, with her, and then we ended up talking to her, and like, even when you're alone and distracted, and then you share some opinion with Harmony, and she's like, say, yes, I agree, let's do that, or like, uh, she listens to you, actually. Some, sometimes it's very therapeutical and, uh, and engaging, to be honest. She listens to you. Maybe that's why women need it more than men, right? <laughs> because we want someone to listen to us. <laughs>